Hello woodworkers, Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. Let's do my 2020 small one car garage uh, workshop or wood shop tour and talk about the seven principles of laying out a small workshop. Obviously it's challenging to survive and do decent woodworking in a small one car garage. Uh, let me give you some of my principles for doing so and there's nothing magic about them. Uh, everybody if you asked for seven principles you'd probably come up with six out of seven would be the same list. Here's my principles. Principle number one, decide what's most important to you and then give that priority as to where you place it. For me that's my table saw and my workbench so I figure out where I want those first. Everything else will have to live within that decision. Principle number two, use all the floor space underneath all of your tools uh, to the extent possible. So here I have a couple of red barrels from Ace and I fill them up with offcuts and then I have some other stuff underneath for storing some jigs as well as some offcuts that I might actually use someday. <laughs> Most of my offcuts I save for a year and then I throw them out. Principle number three, use your wall space to the extent that you possibly can. When I look at a little bit of sheetrock right here, I say, oh, I'm waste, wasting some of my wall space. So use your wall space every possible way that you can. Principle number four, use your high space in the same way. In other words, look for every possible place where you can hang up something that you don't use that often. Hang it up high and then uh, make sure you have a nice step stool to be able to get to it. And in my case, I've even got a mezzanine level up above my garage door where I store all my lumber and even a couple ladders and some pipe clamps and some other things. Principle number five, have things out and available and ready to use, otherwise you won't use them. An example would be like a sharpening station. So I have a little cart here with a sharpening station on the end of it and a grinder. And if I don't have those available, if I put them in a drawer, I won't use them. Principle number six says a couple things might be fixed. Everything else in order to make a small workshop work has to be on rollers and has to be able to be moved around uh, to be used as far as the, the how long of an input output area you might need. So have every other possible tool on casters or on rollers. And then principle number seven is make sure you have a pair of sturdy, beautiful saw stallions. That's a pair of saw horses, trestle style, with uh, in my case match fit dovetail grooves every place on them so that they're very, very versatile. Those are my seven principles. All right, starting in this corner, let's go up the right hand wall, then come down the left hand wall as you're looking into the garage. So obviously I have my table saw. Mine is a Sawstop PCS30. In this short tour, I'm not going to review the tools. I have uh, my jigs over here, homemade and purchased. I have some storage back here on the garage door to hang up things that are light and that might be needed right here on my table saw. In a one car garage, there's uh, usually two little areas on both sides of the door. And so here I keep uh, some longer offcuts as well as my sacrificial two by fours. So that when I set up my sawhorses outside with my Veritas platform saddles on them, then I've got my sacrificial two by fours to support my big uh, sheet goods that I'm breaking down. So that's the table saw area. Let's move into the garage up the right hand side. All right, moving past the table saw is my open area protected by the fact that I've got a foldable outfeed table or accessory for the saw stop. That's actually from the saw stop company. Then I have a uh, Shop Fox uh, dust collection system. It's uh, kind of underpowered. I wish I had a more powerful one. And then that's connected to a top from Rockler in a 32 gallon barrel from Home Depot. So I use this primarily for my table saw, but also I can hook it up quickly to things like my thickness planer or my jointer when I'm going to fill up that barrel with big old wood chips. A lot of the time I don't use this. I use my Craftsman, I think about 13 gallon shop vac for all those tools over there. 
And utilizing floor space next to this barrel is some room for a few sustainers. So I have some power tools in there, including the new Shaper Origin. All right, I don't always have like my sharpening station sitting beside my workbench. If I'm going to do work with my chisels and my bench planes, then I keep it there. Otherwise, if I'm doing other kind of work, I kind of roll it out of the door to get it out of my valuable workspace here. And then I usually move in a, another assembly table uh, on top of my saw stallion in order to make this a more effective area. So on the wall beyond the dust collection system, we just have the traditional clamp racks that everybody builds in their workshop. Mine are a little clouged up because I got pipe clamps in there, panel clamps, and uh, a lot of these F-style bar clamps. So that's stored there. I happen to have some bars across the top of my ceiling in order to hang tripods and cameras and lights. And so those just become a very effective place to put six more panel clamps. So beyond my valuable open space, I have my workbench. This is a five foot long version of the Samurai Carpenter workbench. My workbench is uh, very, very sturdy. Not necessarily the most utilitarian thing in the world for underneath storage and all of that. There is a platform down there. I do keep a number of routers down there, but uh, I just love the looks of it and I enjoyed the process of making it. So very, very sturdy, a nice addition to my workshop, particularly when you make it yourself. Hanging around the edge of that uh, bench is always my set of Samurai saw stallions, modified uh, according to small workshop guy plans in order to have a lot of micro jig match fit dovetail clamp grooves on all of the edges and on the top and bottom. So those give me more width and more length when I need it. When you build uh, saw stallions or saw horses, make sure they're exactly the same height as your workbench and make sure your workbench is exactly the same height as your table saw. That way the saw stallions can be used at the table saw or at the workbench or all the way in between if you really want 12 foot of workspace. So what do we have behind the workbench? Well, we've got a tool wall. Uh, starting down low, there's a, uh, just a place to put a lot of little uh, F-style clamps, bar clamps, whatever you want to call them, and also the little four-inchers, and then uh, a number of things that I might use in my dog holes. And then I have a big sheet of plywood and um, a lot of different dowels and screws and little custom holders and stuff in order to hold my hand planes, my chisels, my mallets, my card scrapers, uh, my, some of my measuring devices, and all of those things of that type. It's a little cluttered right now, but it's going to get lightened up a little bit because I've also set up a French cleat tool wall on the other side of the garage. All right, so this is a very, very critical territory to me. I love it. Uh, I have these, uh, another piece of wood, two by, two by five or two by six up above here, uh, just anchored to the studs. And then I just have these uh, uh, tool holders from Ace, nothing more than a couple prongs coming out. And I find just about every possible tool will hang on those. They're very, very versatile. So then I keep kind of my hand power tools up here. Measuring devices and things of that nature all in their area. A few things, clamps and stuff hanging there. Uh, things for my bench as far as, uh, you know, bench, bench dog, planing stops, things of that nature, and a number of other things that are probably going to get moved. So that is the right hand side of my garage. The garage door, the table saw, underneath storage, the dust collection, sustainers, clamps, tool wall, workbench, and things that are used on the workbench. So as we come down the right hand wall, we get to the very end of the garage and this is a, the built in cabinets that I did several years ago out of a kit. I didn't, I didn't make these, this is not woodworking, this is just assembly. And uh, it's got my uh, Wi-Fi back there, my computer obviously sitting there, uh, all sorts of little things and battery chargers and 
uh, little bitty hand tools and places where I hang my dust mask and my ear protection and uh, just a variety of things including uh, my some of my glues and, and stuff are here. So it's just my little work center uh, uh, and got, I put in a light fixture that has some USB ports so I can charge my iPhone while it's sitting there and I can charge my headset and so forth. So that's this corner. So let's move on over to the tall power tool. So on the very back of the left hand side I've got my water heater and my furnace and uh, my ladder that I need occasionally to get something off the my 12 foot roof. Uh, then I have my uh, Powermatic benchtop mortiser here, my drill press next to that, and my bandsaw. The drill press and the bandsaw are from when. Here's what I have discovered. If I'll take my tall tools, such as my these three tools that are all kind of higher, taller, and group them together. Number one, they generally don't get in the way of each other uh, and can easily be moved in order to get work pieces in and out. And number two, then they don't block a wall. In other words, I'm probably not going to use that part of the wall, maybe I will, but by putting all of my taller tools in one section, then that opens up access to a wall below all of my shorter uh, tools that are on cabinets. Right before this shop tour, I did spend uh, about $1,300 to upgrade my electricity in the shop. So I'm very happy to have an outlet behind these devices now, whereas I was using uh, some extension cords before, which always made me nervous at night whether I'm going to have a fire or something. So this is my back left hand corner. Let's proceed down the left hand wall as we get to some more stuff. So coming back down toward the big garage door now, I have the entry door to my carport where things get rolled in and rolled out to get them out of the way. And that's the secret of working in a small workshop is to get the stuff you're not going to use outside in the carport and then you'll have more room to walk around. I considered building a miter saw station uh, of the Jay Bates style but then I quickly decided not to in my one car garage workshop uh, because uh, just there wouldn't be room for anything else. And so I found this really good uh, cart from uh, Bora called the Portamate and it's uh, you can hook you can install your miter saw there and the wings fold up as you can see from the one wing there that I've got up and then that inlet or that uh, inset comes up and gets level with the bed to support my workpiece. If I want to this other wing can come up as well to support my workpiece going the other way and if I get my shop vac out of there this whole thing will rotate underneath, leaving me a big flat surface. I don't need that, so I don't do that. So I do store my uh, shop vac down there. And then with this shop vac hose, I can reach all of the tools on this side of the garage uh, for my dust collection. And then I've got the little uh, device so that when I turn on a power tool that's plugged into there, the, the shop vac comes on automatically. Uh, when that power tool is engaged. So that's my miter saw station. Pretty happy with that arrangement. To finish off the bottom floor of the tour, we'll talk about the mezzanine in a second. Uh, I've got a uh, router table here with some storage underneath. On rollers, obviously. I have my uh, oscillating sander and my belt sander right there. And then I have my thickness planer, which does not get used there. It gets brought out into this open aisle or gets put right outside of the garage door. And then I recently upgraded my electrical, which I was happy with, so I got an electrical panel back there. Uh, availability of 220 when I'm ready to buy something that needs 220. And then I just finished putting up the uh, French fleet wall storage. Oh, so I've only got three things hung up right now, which is all my nails and everything. And then my corded uh, Milwaukee circular saw and my corded DeWalt big powerful drill. And that obviously is going to get all filled up and then some of my other tool wall items will get brought over here in order to make that more attractive again. And then parked right here, if, if I'm uh, not working, I put my saw stallions on a cart 
and um, and I really, really, really like having these available to work either in my workshop or outside. There's a couple other videos about these. The plans are available on my website for a grand total of $9.99. And those even have 12 videos to support exactly how to build these out of three quarter inch plywood. If you're lucky enough to have it, and I feel very blessed that I've got the space, but I had a tall enough ceiling that I could build uh, a mezzanine level, not anything I can get up or walk on or anything, but a level where I can put my larger lumber storage uh, up there to let it get dry and so forth. And the heat's good up high. Uh, my uh, panel offcuts, you know, sheet goods kind of are designed to go behind my uh, drill press and my bandsaw so I could have quite a stack over there without moving those too far out and getting in my way. But up here, I can not only keep some large lumber, but some uh, excessive pipe clamps or extra pipe clamps and things, or at least the pipes to make my pipe clamps longer. And uh, I've even got a ladder up there. So anyway, uh, if you're lucky enough to have that, consider utilizing it. Part of the principle of using your up high space. Well, that's my workshop tour. I hope that gave you some ideas on layout. I'm pretty happy. It keeps evolving. Probably a year from now, it'll be different. So watch for my 2021 shop tour, see what I've changed. But uh, right now I feel pretty good about it and I'm looking forward to starting some new projects. If you would consider subscribing, that would be much appreciated. I also have a Patreon link uh, down below if you'd like to support me for a few dollars a month, uh, just for a few months, that would be appreciated. And I'd like to thank my current patrons for their support. Uh, I, I don't come anywhere near breaking even, uh, but that's okay. I enjoy doing this. So stay safe in your workshop and we'll see you in our workshop tour in 2021. And I have some other videos in the can as well. I'll see you later. <laughs> Only on this side, but also on the other side. And normally, unless you're filming, it will just <laughs> go down the way it's supposed to. There we go. I generally have to pull it out because I... <laughs> and when I pull it out, generally something falls. But uh, I have to pull it out and talk about the seven principles of laying out a small workshop. I'm actually going to give you uh, that. <laughs> <I'm> a, <clears throat> try it again. It's all. But about 5%, 10% of the time, what are you quoting statistics when you don't need to make up statistics? That is so stupid. <laughs> Come on, dude. Get it together. <laughs>